Okay, welcome. So this is Coral Draw 2021. If you want to find out everything that's new about this program, or if you haven't used it before, then this is the uh, tutorial for you. So this is going to be everything you need to know in about 10 minutes, and we're going to go through all of the basic functions. So first of all, so you're going to you're going to get um, presented with this screen. This is your works your workspace, um, and they might vary slightly depending on the version you're looking at. But for, um, ultimately, Cold Draw um, has very similar layout. And if you want to change the layout to a particular version that you've had previously, then you can do so by uh, going up to your workspace and changing to a different type of workspace. That you're used to so if you're used to using um, Adobe Illustrator you can have an Illustrator type layout okay so off straight away let's have a look at the menu bar so the menu bar across the top here lots of different ways of creating a new document first off you can go file and new you can go control n as a shortcut or you can press the left button there which is new to open a document is here uh, to save a document is the next one. Obviously, that's grayed out at the moment because you don't have a document open. But let's go across and open a new document to start with. So this one's uh, jumped straight into um, landscape mode. And if you want to change that, you can click here on the toolbar at the top and switch that over to portrait. Now, using your roller wheel, you can zoom in and out. Um, and by pressing the mouse button down, if you've got a, a ball on your mouse, then that is going to pan your screen around. And a shortcut key, something that's going to be really useful, is F3 and F4. So F3 zooms the page away and F4 zooms in. Um, to see this feature, if you have an object on the screen and press F4, it will fill the whole screen with that particular object you're drawing at the moment. So always remember to go back to your pick tool over here and click over here. And then you can select an object and do what you want with it. In this case, I'm going to press the delete key and go back to our normal page by pressing F3 to zoom back out again. Okay, so across the top here, um, you can see you've got lots of different um, tools. Um, if you want a preset page, if you want to open A3, you can click from the drop down menu here and click A3 or letter, A5, whatever suits you. Or if there's a particular page size that you want, you can put the dimensions in here and here. This is quite handy if you're building a web graphic and it needs to be, say, in pixels and you want it to be 600 by 600 you can change the units here to pixels and over here then you can put in the desired size 600 by 600 gives you a square um, workspace to uh, produce your graphics in um, you've also got um, coming down the side here these are your tools so on here you've got a pick tool like i said you've also got a shape tool uh, this is here, lots of different um, tools that we can use here. So we've got a crop tool, um, a knife, so the crop is for when you import a picture, which we'll do later. You've got your zoom tool, which is your zoom. Um, Z, again, like I said, you can press F3 and F4. Um, this one here, this is your um, drawing tools if you're drawing in a vector-based format. Uh, you've got Bezier, Pen. Uh, moving down a little bit further, things you might be interested in for quick use are rectangle, circle, and you've got some preset uh, common shapes in here as well. So text tool, um, and then we've got some colors and transparencies. So let's just run through some of the types of objects that you might be interested in. So first off, let's look at a rectangle tool. So I'm going to, um, you see this here, it's got a little um, arrow in the bottom corner of these ones, which means this has got a pop out and it's got multiple options. And once you select one of them, like if I went to a three point, then it would actually, um, change that to the default which is on the left hand side of the menu plane so let's go with a square and I come over here and if I want to put a square in you can see that I can free move in any direction not keeping an aspect ratio or a square object so this is oblong now if I wanted to make this square there's a couple of ways I can do that first off is by pressing the control key and that gives me a square like so so this here you can see that as we're monitoring it in pixels up here, or measuring in pixels, sorry, you can see this is 438 by 438 pixels, and it's perfectly square. Now, if you wanted to add a few little changes to this, you could make the corners round by coming across to your shape tool over here, or F10, and clicking on the node, which is the little point in the middle, and that will allow you to create a rounded edge square, or even over a circle. 
Okay, so that's quite useful. Let's click this and move this to one side. Um, coming down here, we've then got the circle. Again, exactly the same. So this is an ellipse. You can do um, something that's, if you want it perfectly round, you again can press the control key to make that round. If you want to make it from the center point of wherever your um, cursor is at the moment, then you can press the shift and the control key together and then click down and it will pull out a perfect center circle or an ellipse from the center point where you first clicked, which is quite handy. So here you can see that at the moment I've got uh, my guides on that show me the exact center of this particular circle. So before I click, I'm going to hold the shift and the control and pull out. And that's going to give me a second circle on the inside of the first circle. Let's look at some of the drawing tools. So if we come across here to these particular, we've got uh, freehand, which you can click and draw as your heart's content if you hunt there. Or you can use what I prefer is a Bezier tool where you will click from point to point, click and hold and drag. These are the tangent or angle handles that come out and allows you to draw and easily sketch and create a vector object. If you want to create um, a particular type of common shape, there's some presets already done. So you can come across the common shapes here, come up to the top, you see here we've got a smiley face, we've got some um, arrows, all sorts of different things, uh, banners if you wanted to create a banner. And again, whenever you see one of these little red dots, it means you can select your shape tool and make some adjustments. So if we went up here and found, let's say, a star. Um, let's go, actually, the star is on here. Sorry, go back to there. Click the star, bring the star across. And you wanted to change the points on there. Go across, grab the shape tool, and you can create the uh, how deep the star goes in. And again, when we go back to pick tool to select and bring that over here so you can see it on view, you can change the amount of points in the star. And again, here, this is the depth of the the intersect into the center of the um, star as well. Let's talk about the text tool. So let me just select all of these and press the delete key to get rid of it. There's two ways of using the text tool. One is to contain the text by clicking and dragging a box and typing in whatever you need to do here. Or secondary, and the best way, is to just click down with the text tool and there you see your cursor flashing. So at this point, what we can do is type in um, just get rid of this one over here so at this point this text is scalable uh, you can change by clicking on the corner to keep the aspect ratio the same so it doesn't stretch at all or you can stretch it here if you want to um, if you want to make any adjustments to this you can come across and you can create this and make it into a set of uh, curves so by clicking control Q and at this point now you can see lots and lots of node points um, are selected all over the text. So if I come across to my shape tool here, I can zoom in and I can then start playing around with the font as much as I want to. Now, obviously, once you do this, the font is not editable. So sometimes before doing this, it's always handy to duplicate this. If you want to undo anything you've done, just press Control Z, keep pressing it until it goes back to the point where you want. So at this point, you can see it's now a text. I can press Control C and then Control V, copy and paste, or I can press Control D. If I do Control D, and put this into a certain position. If I press Control D again, it will continue to duplicate. Now, if I wanted to align this, what I could do is I could select all of these together, and then I can come up to the top and go Object, and then I can come down to, oops, sorry, come down to Align. Sorry, do it again align and here I can say how I want these objects to be aligned so I could say at this point um, center like so if I want to change the type of font that I've got here I can come up and I could select say bank gothic now if I wanted to fill this object with color and um, there's a couple of ways that I can do that one is over here on my the right hand side where I've got the color palette I can click here and change the color of that to red. If I wanted to add a stroke to the outline of that, I could right click on that and that would give me now a black stroke outline on that. I can also increase the size of the stroke if I want to. Um, 
and that is done by by clicking on this tool here this will then open up the text tool and then from here we can then select how thick we want the hairline to be around the character there's other ways of different, different ways of doing this as well you can say no hairline as well if you wanted to create some funky fills then you can select the shape that you're looking to fill come down here to your interactive fill tool and at the top you can create some different shading you can select the point that you want to go from so let's just say from here i want this particular color to be in um, let's go red and then at this point over here we want this to be in let's say green so you can select a green okay and we can also add additional color points in there as well so if you wanted that one to be uh, let's just make it blue so let's go there and that will allow you to give different fills um, we can also add pattern fills up here as well and these are selected by a drop down here we've also got some other preset bitmap fills in this particular section so i can have a look here as well these are like things like material patterns and so on if you want to save the file you would go control save select the format that you want it to be in 22 which is um, cold draw 2021 um, this is saved in a cold draw format on here as well and if you want to you can also export these particular type of objects as well so you could say file export and you could export that as a say png file or a pdf or a jpeg file so stay tuned for more um, tutorials there's plenty more coming out um, we've got a whole series of them that we're just about to upload i hope you enjoy them and don't forget to like and subscribe Thanks for watching.